The left has been telling you for years what you can eat, what you should say, and now how you should feel. Take a listen to Michelle Obama. Yes, I do. Because we feel the difference now. Yeah. See, now we're feeling what not having hope feels like. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hope is necessary. It's, it's a necessary concept. What else do you have if you don't have hope? Really? This from a woman who in 2008, at 44 years old, said for the first time in her life she was proud of her country when her husband was running for president. And now, eight years later, you're out of hope, Michelle? You've lived a life few can even imagine at the citadel of power and prestige in the world. You and your husband, blessed by God and the American people with the unique and historic opportunity to not only lead America from that shining place on a hill, but impact Americans and give them hope that virtually no others can. And now that you're leaving, Hope is gone? Since when does hope rise and fall with you and Barack in the White House? But it doesn't end there. When asked if your husband's administration achieved his promise of hope to Americans, your answer, a resounding yes. Quote, especially in times of crisis and turmoil. Are you kidding? Did your husband give hope to the parents of James Foley or Stephen Sotloff, who was in custody for over a year while his family was told they could not negotiate because they'd be prosecuted before their son's heads were chopped off? To try to convince America that once you and Barack exit the White House, hope is removed for America is an outrage. And I'll tell you what else is an outrage. An outrage is when your husband struts up to the microphone at a national prayer breakfast and tells Christians to get off their high horses because the Christians are afraid of Muslim terrorists cutting their heads off. And I'd say that that was a crisis, but no hope there. ISIS today only looms larger. And by the way, Michelle, have you heard of San Bernardino, Orlando, or that workplace violence that happened at Fort Hood in Texas? In times of crisis and turmoil, like the 13 hours those heroes were on a rooftop in Benghazi, your all-powerful husband never bothered to explain to us where he was and what he was doing that night. All we know is the only power that he was ready to unleash was Air Force One to fly to Las Vegas for a fundraiser the next morning so that you guys could live the life another four years in the White House. But I get it. For you, hope is gone. You and your family and friends won't be able to fly to another 46 countries with security and hair and makeup in tow. Michelle, you may not realize it, but Americans rejected you and everything you stand for. They know what hope is. Hope is when people 30,000 at a time stand in line in the cold with their children, hoping to get the glimpse of a man that they think can change the course of their lives from the downward spiral that you and Mr. Hope and Change have put them on. I'll tell you what hope and change is. Hope and change is when people show up 20,000 strong after an election, desperate to see the man who actually brought back jobs, almost a thousand, when your husband said it was impossible to bring them back at Carrier. And by the way, if you want to know what it really feels like to not have hope, just walk out of the White House. As ordinary Americans, you'll see real fast. 
Welcome to the America you created, the one with a racial divide, a disrespect of law enforcement and the military, illegals cruising our borders, draining our schools and social services, ISIS and refugees on the rise. No hope? Michelle, I'm surprised at you. What happened to when they go low, we go high?